Good evening, all. I wrap Zane with your futures market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening of Tuesday, the 14th of March, 2023, getting towards 5.40 p.m. Central Time. You know, I don't even have a lot to write about tonight because we're in a pause. Let me explain what that means. Pauses occur in markets after an event takes place like the banking and the market stalls, because here's what's really going on. Am I hearing another bank fail? Is, is something else going on that I should know about? And that's what traders are waiting on. Think about the logic of this. SVB obviously did a terrible job of risk control. Uh, their portfolio, the face values were falling as interest rates were going up. The Fed didn't just start raising rates. It told everybody what it's going to do, and it's been doing it. And as we've seen the two 10-year spread yield go, we've also seen all the spreads move out. In other words, the yields go up, and that face value has been coming down. And whoever was running the bank, whoever's the risk control manager, the president, the CEO, they all did a terrible job. Here's what I'm bothered with and scared of. How many more are there of this? I mean, we just saw Sovereign go. How many more of these are there? So if I'm the Fed, I think you got to call in your team and say, I think we got to do an immediate stress test on banks and see where this situation is. Are we going to have a, a regular weekly basis where we have to do this? That's what I think has to be done. They need to get their arms quickly around the problem. Second thing, the CPI number today was strong. Uh, I think it was strong enough where the Fed should go to 25 basis points. Number one, I think the message is loud and clear that the Fed has to say in one way, we have the banking system under control, we've got the facilities up, we have people running the banks, the liquidation process or the sale process might be the proper term, uh, is underway. They've got to have an auction and sell off the assets and they got to do it quickly. You know what happens when you don't? The longer this takes, the assets are walking on their own. This is America. You want your money, go to the bank, take it, move it to another bank. What are they going to sell at that point? So the hot sale is that the, when the problem happens, but you got all the clients there, bigger hands and you go, yes, we, 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 the big boys are in this bank now. You're going to have the same people that worked for you before. You're going to have your same contacts here, but you're going to have a real balance sheet and this problem's over. That's the sale. The sale doesn't happen when all these people scurry like little squirrels out of there and they go, I, I don't want this anymore. What's the bank buying at that point? They, they're going to try to buy relationships that maybe, maybe, they can't reestablish. You need the people there to keep that going, right? Just think about the logic I'm saying. It works that way. So speed is the key. The stress tests are the key to know what else we have. And the bank, the Fed has to say, we have it under control. We can continue with our normal program. Because if they don't go the 25 basis points, they have two possible answers for it. First, they just want things to calm down. Nothing wrong with that, but they have to say it in plain English. Number two, if they don't do it, all right, and another bank goes, where's their credibility? They, they, they got to fight the inflation. It's that simple. So I, as much as I'm going wishy-washy, I get it. As long as another bank doesn't fail, that's probably the right grammar I want to get out here they should go that 25 basis points because the inflation animal's not waiting to see what goes with the banks. It's there. Have you seen the rents fall? You know, shelter makes up about 60% of CPI. We keep hearing, oh, it's falling. It didn't fall. Tonight, I'm sending out the report to all my, um, to all my subscribers, and they will see in my full research, I've got the CPI report there. Open it up and read it. You tell me where it's coming down like that. And tell me where it's galloping down. It's not. It's taking its time. Well, time's the enemy of all this. All right. So let's look at a few charts and take it from there. First off, I think the picture in the stock indices for the time being is bearish. You're under the 18, what, week average of closes. So the bias is to the downside. When we go to the individual charts, and we're now in June, so I have left the March charts, and you're now into the Junes. Lower highs, lower lows. 
look what you're doing. You've got this confluence of all the moving averages together where you're about to get, and this is, gets real scary, the 18-week getting underneath all three. That can happen like that. How much is this average moving each day? You know how you can get an idea of that? You hit the back button. So it's 4,130. 4, 4,021, day before 4.35. So about 12 points a day. So here you are, 12 points from that after tomorrow. Could, depending on obviously where the market finishes, could take you under 40.02. So then you got the 18 under the 200. Well, you can do the same exercise with the 40.10 versus the 42, and you're gonna see that you could be converting this all into a very bearish formation. Moving averages that align with the shortest moving average, and then over that, the medium term, the 100, and then over that, the 200, a, a classic bearish formation. Then where can the market be headed? Back to the Bollinger Band, 38, 88, let's call it 75. Why not? That's still the target. So I think you look at this as your resistance point, your support point for the time being, and you look at the momentum and you say, okay, the market's trying to correct. Momentum is still oversold. Oversold typically doesn't attract new short money. Got it? That's what it typically doesn't do. And I view any reading personally under 30 as being oversold but you're at 26. An update tomorrow could get you into the resistance, get you away from that. And then I think it gets interesting because I think the pros want to sell the market short. There's nothing friendly about this thing right now. You still have the inflation. The Fed's going to continue raising rates. It, and assuming another bank failure doesn't happen, what, what's so bullish about that? Then we get to the NASDAQ. So the panic sent everything down to the 100-day average in the Bollinger Band. I want to repeat one more time. If you don't learn these courses on how to work with outside days and Bollinger Bands as a minimum, you are trading with both hands tied behind your back. You get down there and I realize everybody's in the state of panic. Think about what, what I'm saying. You're down right here and this was on Monday because, oh my God, the world's caving in, another bank going, what's the Fed gonna do? They, they, at least they opened everything in the morning, where are we in the markets down there? Without knowing anything else, I keep teaching how to work with Bollinger Bands. And the first challenge, oversold market, why are you hanging around? And you're gonna tell me, because the sky's falling and the market's gonna keep going down. Sure it is. And then the market comes back and you get yourself nailed and go, and you have to be saying, what did I do to myself? And now you're saying, well, where am I now? You didn't have to worry about it. That was the spot to come out. Got it? In order to get to the courses at any point during this, just give a click here. It'll take you to our website at irapstein.com and into the word education, learn. Next, we come to the Dow, same thing. Your yeah, first challenges of the Bollinger Band, you're oversold. I can make an argument the markets could rally here back to the 18-day average, but that's all that I could argue. Is it bullish? No, you're in a bear formation. You could get short covering, and if it takes out previous highs, okay. It's not a new trend. It negates the bear trend. There's nothing bullish on this chart in the, this market. Well, here's what was bullish. What do you, how often do you stay under a Bollinger Band? 5% of the time? And what do I teach you here over and over? Take each day that you're under it and count with it. Each day subtract one of the full percentage points, in the futures markets especially. And you get to the point where you'll say, well, as of, walk into this, because you won't be thinking clear. You, you won't be the panic. There's a reason it's under this. Day one, two, three, and you're going, oh my God, where's this thing going? It may embed and do everything. And I'd be telling you, yes, but the odds are that you're going to get back over that Bollinger Band. And you'll say, what are the odds for me? And this was Monday for today, Tuesday. I go coming into the day, the market's taken away all three percentage points. You got a 98% chance, two percentage point chance. Subtract three from the 5%. It's, it's a rule of thumb. 
you got a 98% chance you're going to go back for that Bollinger Band. That doesn't mean it has to happen. The trend is clearly down, but those are the odds with it. Bingo. That's today, and here's where you're at right now. Make sense? By the way, if you like these videos, would you do me a favor, because it helps me tremendously with the algorithms, give us a thumbs up on it. Doesn't cost anything, and it really helps us. Uh, in the T-bond market, higher lows, higher highs. Look, you're, go to the upper Bollinger Band. It's the same thinking. You're over it, and you got to say, I'm overbought. I'm not embedded. Embedded's very crucial. And if you're not the odds favor, you're going to shortly pull back within the band. Doesn't mean you're going to break the uptrend. Now, is there an uptrend at work? There most certainly is. Is the market overbought the way that I teach it? Any reading over 70 is overbought. Do I tell you, remember, I've got a technique that I teach in the full charting course that teaches you it's a checklist. And when I was a, a pilot, I was never a good pilot, by the way, but I was a pilot. Before you take off, you have your checklist. You don't check it when you're in the air. You're checking everything on the ground because it's too late. Well, you don't put on a trade and then go to your checklist. And if it's overbought, if the dollar risk is too big, if, the, if you're fighting the bias of the market, I can go on. It's a very simple list. That is saying, no, you're not a buyer there, but you're certainly looking to be a buyer in this range if you leave the overbought condition. But where would you put a stop? The recent lows all the way back here, these numbers are $2,000 risks from there. Guess what Ira was going to do? He's going to have a good dinner. He's not going to even look at that. It's not a market I want my client in. Now we are correcting in the 10-year, getting away from overbought. So now you get my attention. And probably what was resistance of the 100-day average will be the initial support. You tell me that it wasn't the case, both yesterday and today. It's exactly it, and you're fighting it. However, if you buy it there at 113, you got to have a stop here. Where, where are you, where's your money risk? You're going to throw a dart and just say, well, I'm going to risk that. There's got to be more to it. So when it doesn't line up, the hardest thing for a trader is to pick up his chips and leave the table. You don't play when there's no hand to play. Does that make sense? Dollar index. This is a spot to cover shorts. Is this was the spot on the Bollinger Band, first time you hit it to come out, right here specifically, not the second day, the first. This is the spot that, to be coming out of shorts. That doesn't mean it can't crater. That's not what I'm saying in any way, shape, or form. You've taken the high percentage. Look at each time it's hitting this band. Okay? Learn to play with them. That's what the courses teach you. You buy the course once. It sticks with you. Low or low, high or high, right to the band. You, you're going to fight that, not me. Now, we have Miss Lagarde coming out shortly. I think it's Thursday. And she's probably going to come with a 50 basis point hike and announce that there'll be another one right behind it. And what the market wants now and what it'll make the euro, I think, friendly is that she's able to go up because they're still fighting the inflation. They don't have our banking problem. We, on the other hand, if we go up on interest rates, we're scared that we're breaking the system now, right? Isn't that what's in the press every day? The Fed broke the system. The Fed raised interest rates so much that there's your first real casualty showing. You got it. It was mismanagement of the bank. I want you to listen loud and clear. Total mismanagement of the bank. Stops and starts there. They had the tools. They had the ability. They could have hired good hedgers. They could have protected themselves. From everything I've read, that's it. Are there things I don't know? There are. And I can't address what I don't know. But from what I know and what I've read, total mismanagement of the bank. In the British pound, lower and low, higher high. What do you do when you get up to the upper band? So long, folks. Bitcoin, what are you supposed to do on a day like today? I didn't see this coming, but I saw this coming, and I had people write me, one of my subscribers say, Ira, what a call. You told me the first time it hits that band, you don't hang around. Boom. And by the way, I think it's in my testimonials or something today that uh, we, our staff put it there. 
bang. Now, it's the same thing up here. I know you want to buy it. It's going back to $60,000. Go ahead and buy it up there. In Brent versus WTI, as long as you stay under this, there's a problem. Now, here's the great news for the Biden administration. Oil's in a downtrend. Now, do I think it'll stay under the Bollinger Band? I, I hope I'm not wasting my time here. You know I don't. Am I bullish? Absolutely not. This is a bear pattern. Am I looking for ways to get short? I absolutely am. Is it there? I wish it were, but it's not. WTI, what's got me excited is, didn't Joe say that under $70, they're going to replace and replenish our strategic reserve? Well, Joe, we're at $71.91. We're up 40 cents tonight. I don't know what's magical about 70, by the way. Uh, you've got a nice move that's come down. At any point, why aren't you buying? Just replenish what you've taken out. I think that makes a heck of a lot of sense. You sold it in the 90s. This is a heck of a trade. And it's not about anything but replenishing the oil so we're not at the mercy of an event. I don't know what that event would be, but that's the idea here. So does it matter if it's 7140? Does it matter if it's 70, 65, 75? I think it's time that you consider, if you look, you're having a hard time getting under these prices unless you know something we all don't know. Gasoline. Well, as the market's fighting with itself now, everybody's wondering what's the consumer going to do? And that will weigh on this. But as you got overdone on the upside to the Bollinger Band, you just hit the lower band. I laugh about it because it's so crystal clear to me. And it's not something that I come out here and I don't talk about every single evening with you. And they're there. You can do this on your own. Natural gas. Now, the Nor'easter is not turning out to be the monster storm they were scared about for New York and Boston. It doesn't mean that you're out of the woods for nat gas, but it's still in a downtrend. Momentum's down. It is not oversold. It's at the resistance point. If it's going to let go, I think it lets go now. So that's what I'll be looking at. So you put it all together. You come up with a game plan. That's what we're here every night trying to do, trying to help with it. Again, education, education for you. That's the big thing. Click up here. It, you'll see the icon. It'll take you right into our education center. Educate yourself. I'm Ira. Have a good evening.